Greetings all. Welcome to another session here of uh, Tuesday Talks. Today we're going to be continuing our discussion of the Cognitive Academic Language Learning Approach, or CALA, and we're going to be looking at the issues of uh, academic development, why it's difficult and how to set it up and how to teach academic language. Uh, so let's just jump right in here. Why is it that uh, academic language development is difficult for second language learners? Uh, I think the most uh, logical approach to look at this is what things do you actually do with academic language? And they're not things that, you know, require motion. You're not moving around when you do this. You're sitting, you're listening, you're trying to pay attention. So a lot of it is cerebral, right? A lot of it is cognitive uh, activities. There's actually less interaction in a typical academic setting. Not always the case, but in a typical academic setting. And so because it's more difficult to simply understand what's going on as opposed to seeing others do it and follow along, it's going to be more difficult for second language learners. Uh, academic language also uses language that's tuned for those specific content tasks. So we have specialized language involved with academic language so that you can do things like take notes, uh, follow along with a story, uh, requesting information in a polite manner. Uh, giving information so that it, f again, fills a particular need. There's are specific skills more in line with academic language that the typical uh, environment doesn't require. And so that's another reason is because these are more cognitively based activities and they're more finely tuned toward academic information. Uh, next, uh, the uh, academic language is used to provide specific academic functions. So, for example, giving and receiving information in an academic setting. Or maybe you're trying to inform or explain, describe, you know, defend your position type of thing. It may be that you're trying to summarize or classify. And all of these things are more geared toward academic language, things that students don't typically have to do outside uh, it, or at least not nearly as much. Things like problem solving or inferring, right? Persuading uh, in, in a formal setting. Things that you'll have when you go through a class, uh, an academic class, but you won't necessarily have out in the real world. Uh, and so the language is going to be more difficult. It's a specialized form of language that should be taught when you're teaching students, especially when you're teaching them to survive and succeed in, in the academy, in a school or a college type of thing. So uh, why do we want to teach academic language development? Well, for one main reason, it's not typically taught. Uh, in the world of ESL, this would probably be called English for Specific Purposes, ESP, uh, or EAC, English for Academic Purposes. And so it's a specialized form of language that isn't typically taught. So we're going to be teaching it so that you can then in turn use it to teach uh, your students. It's also going to help improve the success that your students are going to have in a class because they're now going to have tools and opportunities and a little bit more understanding as to what is going on in the academic setting. So it's going to be a benefit to the students because they're going to understand more. Okay? It's also going to promote higher order thinking skills or HOTS. Um, and so because you're teaching these academic skills, you're also trying to encourage students to understand what it means to infer or to persuade or to summarize or to see a comparison. And all these types of skills require higher order thinking skills or requires them to be more of a critical thinker. And so, again, that's a good thing uh, for the students to learn. Lastly, it's going to meet the context uh, that it's going to meet the context that teachers are expecting in their classes. Uh, Straight academic teachers, history teacher, science teacher, uh, whatever type of teacher is going to have specific expectations. We're going to try to meet those needs because we're providing that academic language for our students. So it's going to meet those needs, it's going to meet those expectations. Now those are some of the reasons why we should be teaching academic English uh, to our second language learners. All right, how do you select uh, academic language? Again, every major is going to be different. You use different language and you use, I mean, not drastically different, but you use specialized language for math that you don't use for history. And you use specialized language for you know, politics that you don't use for uh, uh, biology. Uh, there are functions that you'll do in a history class that you won't perform in a, in a science class and vice versa. So you've got to identify what the needs are for each of the classes. Identify the language, 
uh, used in the content courses. And then you should identify the language used in the materials as well. Okay, what are you going to read through these materials and know what it is these materials include that you should make sure your students are going to be aware of. After you know what those materials and what those expectations are in the courses, you then develop authentic materials to meet those needs <clears throat> so that they can master that. And lastly, then you give students this opportunity to learn this new material, okay, this new specialized material, and, <coughs> and uh, help them practice that so that they can become better at it when they go into the academic uh, environment. How do you teach academic language? Um, similar to how you teach all the other languages. You're going to teach it. You're going to provide an example. You may model it, demonstrate it, and then you're going to let them practice it. Uh, you want to encourage noticing. Very important in any form of learning, but you want them to, in the words of the great Columbo, look and listen, listen and look. Uh, you want them to notice what's going on. What are other, other students doing in the class? And uh, notice the materials that are being read. Notice how the teacher talks and acts. So uh, noticing is going to be a big thing. Uh, you should be teaching the content language when you're teaching it. Uh, when you're teaching your students, you should be teaching that content language so that they know ahead of time, giving them a little pre-step before they go into the class, right? Provide opportunities for them to practice. Knowledge up here is one thing, right? I mean, this is, some would call this competence. Let them use it. Let them act it out. Give them some opportunity to perform with this material, right? And lastly, continue to teach learning strategies. Teaching learning strategies is very big in the color approach and one that I would wholeheartedly agree with. The quicker you can teach learning strategies to students so that they can teach themselves, the better they're going to be as they become independent learners and need you less. And uh, that's all I have for teaching academic language. If you do have any questions, you can certainly give me a holler. If not, I will see you on another Tuesday Talk. Bye-bye now.